Welcome to another Odds HQ NBA betting preview video for Wednesday, September the 2nd. I'm Ian Cameron, and we are turning our attention now to the second round of the NBA playoffs with today's video. It's the Eastern Conference semifinal series and game two between the Miami Heat and the Milwaukee Bucks. We've got the uh, Milwaukee Bucks, a five point favorite currently here in game two. Uh, the total, 221 in this game. I'm of the proponent at this time of year. And as we're getting into deeper into the NBA playoffs, you're getting these series becoming more and more competitive as the teams are getting better and better and the quality of competition for each team keeps on uh, increasing. Um, you're going to start seeing certain series develop a texture or a tone, or you're going to start to see some things unfold that are going to start to lead you in the direction that, you know what, maybe one team just matches up better with the other team in, in a particular series. We're already starting to see signs of that with the uh, Boston Celtics and the Toronto Raptors. You know, the Boston Celtics have done very well head-to-head -head against the Toronto Raptors this year. Uh, they did well in the regular season. They're the only team to hand the Raptors a loss in Orlando during the regular season in the bubble. And sure enough, the Boston Celtics have taken the first two games of their series uh, in the second round to take a 2 nothing lead uh, over the Raptors. Boston's just matched up well with Toronto. I get the same impression from this series when it comes to Miami's ability to match up well with Milwaukee. Uh, I cashed a ticket with Miami, plus 5.5 in Game 1. They ended up winning that game outright, and I was not one bit surprised. I thought coming into this series that this was a dangerous opponent, for the Milwaukee Bucks, and there is absolutely nothing that I've seen through the first game that changes my mind in that department. This is a difficult opponent for the for the Milwaukee Bucks. The Miami Heat can do a lot of things that negate Milwaukee's strengths, and they can do a lot of things that exploit Milwaukee's weaknesses. And I'm going to explain how in this series. There are a variety of things to me. When I've seen these two teams play head-to-head -head and play not just head-to-head, -head, but just play in general throughout the season, you know what, what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. For the Milwaukee Bucks, we all are talking about how good of a defensive basketball team this is, and they are. Don't, don't get me wrong. The Milwaukee Bucks are an elite defensive team, but their absolute best strength defensively is their interior defense. Defending the paint, defending the low post, that is where Milwaukee's defense is absolutely supreme. Their perimeter defense, their three-point defense, is not quite as strong as their interior defense. And when you look at this Miami Heat team and the way they can shoot the three-pointer, the way they can shoot from beyond the arc, that becomes a little bit of a trouble spot for the Milwaukee Bucks. We saw it on full display. Uh, in game one of this series uh, on, uh, on uh, I'm trying to remember the date now, uh, Monday night. Yes, it was Monday night was uh, game one of this series. 115-104 uh, victory for the Miami Heat in that game to take that series lead. The Miami Heat can shoot the three ball. They absolutely can. And believe it or not, they didn't shoot it all that well in game one. 12 of 31, 39%. But in general, you know, that's where the... Bucks weaknesses and the Miami Heat are capable of exploiting that. You, you know, Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, all of those guys are very, very capable perimeter shooters. And it's an area that Miami probably has a little bit of an advantage of being able to exploit that. The fact that they won by double digits in game one and they still, they, they, you know, it was not like they torched the Nets, you know, from three point range. They were 39%. That's a very good sign for the Heat. And on the flip side, another area that I think the Miami Heat match up well with Milwaukee in, in this series is transition defense. Okay, Milwaukee just crushes teams on the fast break. Milwaukee just crushes teams feasting on turnovers and turning those turnovers into fast break, open floor, easy buckets the other way, easy baskets. Miami's defense this season in terms of fast break transition defense, Miami's one of the best teams in the NBA in that regard. 
and if and 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 they they can and if they can set up, you know, and, and force Milwaukee into a half court set, and we saw that in Game One, especially down the stretch when that game was close. Miami pulled away because you know what? They didn't turn it over. They didn't feel the fast break from Milwaukee. They forced Milwaukee to execute against a sticky Miami Heat defense in the half court. And that's where you can get the Bucks. You know, and uh, what I also like about Miami is transition defense to stifle a lot of what Milwaukee likes to do with the fast break and get that, you know, that running game going and, and that get that transition game. That's where so many of Milwaukee's points end up being scored. And I also like that they've got the low post size and 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 the length in the interior and multiple bodies, multiple bigs that they can throw. And obviously, you know who, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, the Greek freak. When you look at Bam Adebayo and Kelly Olynyk, and there are those are those are just two, but there's more than that. But the Miami Heat can throw multiple bigs, multiple bodies at Giannis, make him work inside the paint for everything he gets. And if you can't find a clear path to the lane with, you know, throwing multiple bodies and looks, throwing up that wall. Donald Trump talks about the wall, big, beautiful wall. He always says, you know, this is a wall that teams are putting up against Milwaukee in the playoffs. The Raptors, when they beat the Bucks in the East final last year, this is the way they played. They put up a wall in the paint and force the ball out of Giannis Antetokounmpo's hands, force the Greek freak, to get rid of the ball and not allow him to be the dominant force to carry this Milwaukee Bucks team. The Raptors did it to perfection, and I think Miami and Eric Spolster is no fool. You know, he's one of the best coaches in the NBA, in my opinion. He knows exactly that that blueprint worked for the Raptors last year. Damn well, he's going to try it again this year, and it really worked for in uh, for the uh, Miami Heat in Game One. And like I say, you got multiple bigs that can at least harass, you know, and bother. Giannis. I'm not saying it's completely going to shut him down. There's no way that's likely going to happen most games, but you can at least, you know, frustrate him a little bit, harass him a little bit, and at least, you know, neutralize his impact on a basketball game a little bit. So I think when you put all of that together, Miami's got multiple ways that they can make this a very difficult series in Milwaukee. And look at the regular season meetings with these two teams. You know, Miami, two and one in the three regular season meetings against Milwaukee. They beat Milwaukee in both regular season games before the pandemic and before the bubble in Orlando uh, earlier in the season. The third regular season game came in the bubble, and it was a game that Miami led by 17 at halftime, and Milwaukee came back with this crazy fourth-quarter surge where they uh, came all the way back to not only win the game, but win the game by double digits and cover the initial full-game point spread. It was a really tough beat if you had Miami in that game. But why is that significant? Miami was up by 17 at the half. I know they lost by double digits, but Jimmy Butler didn't play in that game. Goran Dragic didn't play in that game. That game meant absolutely nothing to the Heat. And Milwaukee, and, and no Butler, no Dragic in the lineup and on the court. And Milwaukee still needed to frenetically rally from behind in the fourth quarter just to win that game. Uh that tells you all you need to know. This is a Miami team that has that has been sticking in the craw of this Milwaukee team. Has given them fits all season long, and of course they win Game One of this series as well. Now there's going to be a lot of people, and you're going to hear this a lot going into this game on Wednesday night. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks off a loss. You got to bet it, right? You got to bet Milwaukee off a loss. They're, they've been phenomenal. Everybody knows the last couple seasons, Milwaukee Bucks against the spread off a loss have been a phenomenal bet. They, and they have been. This year, though, that Milwaukee Bucks off a loss trend hasn't been the dominant force it's been in the past. They're 13 and 5 straight up after a loss, but they're only 11 and 7, you know, against the spread. I've seen them in the past 14 and 2, 16 and 2 ATS off a loss. This year, they're only 11 and 7 ATS off a loss. So, you know, I understand Milwaukee's probably going to play a lot better than they did in game one. But I get the sense this is looking a lot like Boston-Toronto, where maybe that that series might be a little bit mispriced. That maybe Boston's just the better team that matches up better th against the Raptors. I'm starting to think this series could be mispriced. And this is a philosophy I look for later on in the NBA playoffs every year when you get these series that just are mispriced from the beginning. 
And if you can identify those series that are mispriced from the beginning, you could probably bet that team every game in the series and cash a ticket with them. And I think we have one of those series here with Miami and Milwaukee. I think this is mispriced. You know, maybe in regular season, you could say Milwaukee deserves to be five, five and a half point favorites. Hell, maybe even seven and a half point favorites uh, over Miami. Not now. Miami has been spectacular here in the playoffs. Just phenomenal. Five and zero oh straight up. Five and zero oh against the spread. They swept Indiana in four straight games. They took. They just took a stranglehold of Game One down the stretch to beat Milwaukee. They've matched up well all season long with Milwaukee. To me, this is a mis, This is a mispriced series potentially, where you could just consistently, repeatedly come back and bet Miami plus the points in every game and probably cash a ticket. I get it, Milwaukee's going to play better. I expect them to. I know they will. But we're talking about a situation here where, you know, Milwaukee can be satisfied, get their victory, and we can you could still cash a ticket with Miami because I'm not convinced my, if Milwaukee wins this game at all, I'm not convinced they can win it by any sort of margin. They've struggled all year with Miami. Miami's got the characteristics of a team that, as I said, can exploit the weaknesses of Milwaukee, can and their strengths, you know, match up well with some of Milwaukee's weaknesses, and and I think it's it's a situation for me where the Miami Heat could be it could be one of those series where you could just bet Miami plus the points every game, and remember there's going to be no adjustment or very little adjustment in this series from a point spread standpoint because there's no home court switch. There's no home court advantage. They're all neutral court games here in Orlando. You can probably expect Milwaukee to be a five, five and a half point favorite for this entire for every game in this entire series or thereabout. Okay, maybe you might see a point shift in either direction, but you're going to see Milwaukee laying five, five and a half in pretty much every game this series. I don't think that's the right price range for this matchup and the way Miami's playing right now. So I, I, I don't like Miami plus the points as much as I did in game one, but you better believe I'm coming right back there with some kind of bet here on Miami once again plus the points here in game two. So, again, I respect the people that love that Bucks off a loss trend. Uh, you know, Raptors were pretty damn good off a loss too. How did that work out for them in game two uh, last night against Boston? Not very good. So, again, uh, you got to sometimes buck those trends. I think this is a good matchup for Miami. This is going to be a tough matchup for Milwaukee. And it wouldn't surprise me that even if Milwaukee plays better, it wouldn't surprise me one bit to see the Bucks in a dogfight, tooth and nail, down to the wire once again here in Game 2. So for my Odds HQ uh, NBA betting preview video uh, recommendation uh, for Wednesday, September 2nd, I'm going to take the Miami Heat plus 5. The heat is on. <laughs> The heat is on, on. The heat is on. Ooh, it's on the street. A little Glenn Fry. I'm dating myself. I know that's from the 80s, but there you go. Um, Miami Heat plus five against the Milwaukee Bucks. That'll be my Odds HQ NBA betting preview recommendation for Wednesday, September 2nd. All right, that'll wrap it up. I'm Ian Cameron. Thanks for watching. Reminder to check out odds.com every day for great sports betting content, as well as the Odds HQ YouTube channel for great live shows and videos daily to help you pile up the profits. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the games and good luck on Wednesday, and I'll be back with you tomorrow on Thursday for another Odds HQ NBA betting preview video.